Fear can be a paralyzing emotion that can trap anyone at any time. Monica Guidry is an author and worship leader, and she had to face fear head on in a battle for her life. Monica joins us today from her home in Columbus, Ohio. Thanks, Monica. I appreciate it. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Monica, you're a wife and a mother of two, and life seemed pretty normal until one afternoon when terror struck you and your home. Tell me what happened. So it was a normal day. I and my children were home and my son was downstairs and I started to hear noises coming from my son's room and it sounded like um, some crackling, crackling noises. So I went back into the computer room and I started hearing noises again and this time it sounded like someone was throwing rocks at my oldest son's window. And so I got up again and I go to the steps and I look down and I don't see my son. And as I'm turning around to come up the stairs, a man jumps out. I noticed that the man that had jumped out had a knife over his head. Were you in shock or did you think this was going to be a life and death situation, life and death struggle that may involve your kids who at the time were very, very young? It took a minute for me to process. I know that's going to sound weird. It took a minute for me to process that this was really happening. So what happened next was I, I began to tell him that he could leave, you know, just go leave us alone. He could go and I wouldn't report him or anything like that. But he had other plans. He said no. And I had to start um, defending myself because he started cutting and stabbing at me and I was defending myself. I was trying to block him and at some point we wrestled and I fell to the ground and he was hovering over me with the knife and I'm, I'm fighting as best as I could and my doorbell rang and as soon as my doorbell rang I just thought to myself I've got to get down to the door. If I could just get down to the door and as he's cutting and slicing and he's saying die and then that's just when I started really really with all of my might fighting back. I literally just started fighting back and I got up, I was able to get up and I was able to take the knife from him. So I took the knife from him and I'm holding it at him at this point and backing down the steps to my door. And as soon as I got to the door, I opened it up and a man was standing there and I just got hysterical. Like there's a man, he broke into my house and he's trying to assault me. I don't know how this man got from the top of my steps down to the bottom. It was like he flew down the steps and out my back door and the man chased after him, but they never caught him. That, that had to be absolutely terrifying, but it sounds like a miracle that you weren't really killed or even badly wounded. The God thing about all of this is that I have a couple of scratches on my arms, but nothing else. My dress, the dress that I was wearing that day has, you could, it, I kept it for a while, but it has slices in it from the knife, but nothing penetrated. Now I should add that the police never did find the man who broke into your home and threatened you. They never found the guy, and which was the reason why I was afraid. I was afraid because they never found him and he could have easily come, came back and finished, finished the job that he started. Well then the next day, how did you plan to face this new fear you were confronting? You were back on your own again. It dawned on me um, that night, and it was when I was lying in bed next to my husband, and um, I had a knife under my pillow. Now, I know that my husband would protect me with all of his might, but that wasn't security enough for me. So I had this knife tucked underneath my pillow just in case, and I remember not sleeping at all just staring up at the ceiling. I didn't even go to the restroom in between the night because I was just so afraid to get up and move. I was completely paralyzed. This shook my faith and it did in a sense because it developed something in me that I had not had before, which was a spirit of fear. And next morning I planned had my bags packed at the door to go over a friend's house because I was a stay-at-home mother, so I was not working during the, at that time. I was getting ready to leave out of the door to go to this arrangement with me being at my friend's house and Holy Spirit stopped me and said, no, you're not going anywhere. And because I'm an obedient servant most of the time, I put my bags down, I unlatched my daughter from her car seat, and we stayed at the house. I didn't go anywhere. So you had one day that fear took over your life. Uh, did fear ever, ever return? The first day was the, the last day. 
that I let that consume me, fear consume me. So this is what happened. I stayed home and I went through my home and I just began to pray over my house and um, prayed over every window and every door and through every room um, and basically dispelled fear. Well, Monica, explain to the folks watching in our audience who maybe are not familiar with why you believe that speaking out and declaring what you believe was an important part of removing the fear. I believe in the power of words and declaration. Why? Because our whole world was formed with words. God spoke it and it was. And so I believe that there are times where we have to declare and speak things audibly in order for things to happen. Now, now I know you're saying you dealt with it head on, but I have to assume there are moments when fear confronts you. How do you deal with it when it comes back? Of course, of course fear pops up. But for me, what I do is I weigh it out. Is this fear, am I afraid or am I unsettled? So when I feel like I'm afraid, I know that I'm afraid because it's paralyzing. Fear always will paralyze you. Fear will always paralyze you. It will stop you in your tracks and stop you from moving forward. Being unsettled is just a feeling that you have, but you're still able to move. So when I feel fear, that's when I decide I'm gonna face this thing head on and just go for it. Um, so yes, fear comes up every now and again, and I'll, I have to just shut it down instantly because I've decided that that's not something that I'm going to operate in. Well, for people out there, where, where in the Bible do you feel a person needs to turn to if they're really dealing with real fear right now? I would absolutely go to the scripture that says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Clearly in that scripture it says, he has not given that to us. He's not given that to us. So if we have it, we know that it has not come from our Heavenly Father. Well, Monica, thanks. thank you for sharing your viewpoint and for sharing your story with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. If you'd like more information about Jesus Christ or how to connect to a local church, go to our website or Facebook page. We have a lot more resources there that we can connect you with. Plus, I'd like to hear from you.